Let's talk about the the Ellie Williams scandal. Like you, a lot of people say you're racist, this and that, but you're supporting the Muslim kids who were wrongly convicted of. So, know. so basically, the Ellie Williams story is that she's put up online saying. I've been groomed by Pakistani Muslim businesses in this town. They've raped me, they've beat me, and she's got these horrific injuries. So I travel to Barrow. I do investigative journalism like I've done in Telford, yes. Yeah? So I travel to Barrow. I obviously have, which I would admit originally I have a bias where it's Muslim men who have raped a young girl. This fits into the narrative of the story I talk about. She's been beaten and failed by the police. Let's get to Barrow, yeah? And I get up to Barrow, and my job is to investigate what's going on. So I start searching around the town, asking questions about Ellie. I meet a, a young boy, Jordan, who was falsely accused by Ellie. He wasn't just falsely accused, she set him up. She created a Snapchat profile in his name on her phone and she messaged herself lots of things. She injured herself and she rang the police laying on the floor. Police come round, what's happened? Jordan Trengrove just raped me. He's arrested, given bail. She then says he's done it again, twice. He gets remanded into jail. So I meet Jordan. He's released from jail because there was no evidence. He didn't do it. I meet him and straight away, so I'm like, hold on. So I look at this. I think, well, at the minute, there's 2,000 people in the car parking cars because it's dark COVID. This town's about to blow up. Yeah. I need to find the Muslim men. So I then went and found the Muslim men. So I, I, I'm waiting by the ice cream van and this woman says, well, what the fuck do you want? And it's the wife of of one of these Muslims. I said, I'm just here. I just want to get to the truth, yeah? I don't care if the truth isn't what I thought it was. I don't care if it goes against my narrative. I just want to get to the truth. I want to speak to your husband. She said, okay, um, I'll get in contact with him. I said, here's my number. He rings me up. I go around to his house. I sit here. Uh, I meet his boy, his two sons. His son's 16. This uh, it hit home for me. Because as I walk in the house, someone shouts, he's at his front door. As I walk in there, someone shouts nonce at him. Because obviously... The word is that he's groomed, he, he's one of the groomers, yeah? Woman shouts not to him, and someone shouts racist at me. Yeah? <laughs> I look at him, and, I, and as I walk in, I say, I think I won that one. Right. <laughs> but then I sat down with his kids, and I thought, you know what? I get called a racist. That's had a very adverse effect on my children, yeah? It's caused them problems. This bloke is being called a pedophile, yeah? His 16-year-old son, and I remember looking at his son, just thinking... Your life must be fucked right now, bruv. He's had to leave school. He's getting bullied. I think, I don't know if I can say, I think he self-armed at the time. I think, so I, and I, and I, so I spoke to Mo. I said, bro, I, I just want to ask you lots of questions because there was lots of reasons why his name was there as a groomer, yeah? And allegations of this and that. So I said, I want to get to the bottom of these questions to see why people are saying this. So, and he was an open book, this guy. Yeah, do you know what? He was a very colourful character, to say the least. He reminded me at times of myself in how he. So when they said he was a groomer and there's a big protest, he drives down his ice cream van, bib and his horn. Yeah, bear in mind he's totally innocent. He's totally, he's totally innocent. Yeah, there's no evidence against him. So. That was his way of dealing with it. A bit like, I, I do that some, and that's my way of dealing with things sometimes. So, but then his, his family's been destroyed. So I meet him and I say, I need to find Ellie's family. And I go meet another Muslim business owner. Now, all the media are saying, I'm, I'm up there to stoke fear and rise against Muslims. The, it would have been easy for me to go up there and say, look, those are Muslim gangs. Mm -hmm. But, um, but one, I, she's unreliable. We cannot, no one can take what this girl says and see another man's life destroyed. So I met a Muslim business owner, had his restaurant for 30 years, family run business, and overnight his restaurant, restaurant's destroyed. And I felt for him. And I said, oh, I said to each of them, I said, look, people will still think this is a cover up, yeah? When I come out and do a report and tell people what's gone on here and that there's no evidence against any of you, yeah? Then the people who, don't trust the system and don't trust the police, we'll, we'll listen to that. And I, I didn't even have to say that to the Muslims. Each Muslim community member there opened their doors to me. One of the families, so I went to meet another Muslim family. They gave me information. One of those men they gave me information on has now been convicted. So there were men who were grooming in that town. But it made me realise that trial by public opinion, I've faced trial by public opinion, I face it all the time, but I haven't faced it for pedophile charges. These men's lives were destroyed.